Let me pull it up over here to make sure it is. There's always that weird buffer. YouTube. Plus there's like a 15 second delay. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I just got the notification. Oh, sweet. So we should be, all right, so I'm gonna share, uh, you know, do, do my normal thing, share this on social media, but while I am doing that, I will let you introduce yourself. This is just for anybody uh, coming back in. This is just your, uh, my live um, language podcasts, and I like to welcome any and everybody on. I don't care if I know you or don't know you or have never talked to you or whatever, if you love languages. I love talking to you, so my camera just went blurry. There we go. Uh, but yeah, feel free. Introduce yourself. Plug your channels. Plug everything that you do, and uh, we will get into this. Awesome. Uh, so my name is Lane. I am a college student currently studying computer science and web development. Uh, nothing to do with languages or linguistics. Uh, as for language learning goes, I took two years of German in high school, um, and then one semester of intro German um, in college. Uh, and then I've obviously dabbled like the rest of us have um, previously with Dutch. I'm currently working on Hindi now. Um, I've studied little things like Russian. Um, I'm kind of I'm a professional language dabbler, as I like to say. That's um, uh, that that hits yeah. close to home to me because that's so, <laughs> uh, so a lot of the comments that I get on my channel are usually yeah. somewhat criticizing of that, but. Nothing uh, wrong with it. Nah, man, it, you, you enjoy yeah. your own things. Uh, yeah. So you study, so you study, you said two years of German. I did, yeah, and then one semester in college, yes. How would you say, because um, I know there's always that debate of learning in a classroom versus not learning in a classroom, things like that. How would you say um, your experience with the learning, like in that regards, or did you find yeah. the structured learning of the classroom good? Yeah, so... Um, Actually, when I was in high school, um, I signed up for my first year, but I never actually got placed in the class. So to compensate for that, uh, Duolingo was starting to get, you know, to become a big thing around that time. Mm -hmm. So I figured I wanted to try German. Um, obviously, that was my first attempt ever at language learning. I had no idea what I was doing. Right. Um, I just went on, you know, Duolingo. I just clicked the keyboard. I looked at the words. I memorized them all. I uh, had no idea grammatically what was going on at all. Uh, I got placed in German the next year, and by the time that I had spent in that whole previous year on Duolingo, um, I was basically halfway through the German tree at that point, um, giving me a really decent, um, you know, vocabulary um, range, uh, but I really didn't have any of the grammar there to kind of clean it up. I knew phrases, um, just, you know, sentence structures that Duolingo teaches. Right. I had no idea how to conjugate verbs or anything, so the class was really nice with... Um, kind of cleaning all of that information in my brain up that I already had, just right. not knowing how to use. Um, so I'd say if you're going in blind, it can be definitely hard. But if you already have a little bit of background there and you just have someone to kind of help you clean it up and you have someone to, you know, let you actually use the language with, and that can definitely really be beneficial. Yeah, that's that's interesting. And um, did you, when you took it, uh, took it in college, um, mm -hmm. What were the level? Because I'm, I'm assuming you took kind of like a was it like an intro to German was, or something like yeah, that? German 101. Cool. And we're, so I'm assuming there was people. How how that's that's interested me about learning via a classroom is the idea that you know if you which you you didn't say that you were advanced when you went in there, but you did have exposure. So how was the class in terms of you had knowledge, but then maybe this other person had literally never even looked at German. Yes. Um, so I took a placement test for my university because, you know, most universities across the U.S. Um, require you to take one semester of a foreign language for a gen ed requirement. Um, so the, the gen ed requirement is an intro level 100, um, you know, 101 level class. Well, I could have taken a new uh, language, but I decided to go back on German because by that point I had been... I mean, years out of high school, I was kind of fuzzy on my German. I had been to Europe once, um, used my German and kind of forgot a little bit. And I was kind of there to refresh. I took the placement exam. I actually tested into German 300, which uh, is a fifth semester class. Whoa. Um, but the way that the credits worked at my university, I ended up just taking a 100 level class. Um, so 
I did feel um, out of place being in a classroom full of people with no experience at all mm -hmm. compared to someone who was at that time, I'd say a very high A2, maybe an extremely low B1 level uh, in German. So um, the teacher, I think, started picking up towards the end that I was um, experienced in German. It was obvious by my you know, exam scores and just me being able to actually use um, more right. of the German that was taught in class. Um, but yeah, I was thinking about it and I thought a intro level university class for a language would be really difficult for someone going in with no experience in the language. Right. Um, I felt the accelerated pace was kind of almost too much for me. And I was, you know, uh, years of experience in German at that point. So, yeah. And I'm assuming that's probably where a lot of the, um, negativity around classroom learning is, is because I mean, they are set up where they have to do certain things like, you yep. know, there is that criteria. So, mm -hmm. um, that's really, really interesting. Um, did you become kind of the guy in class that people would maybe if they had a question, they would, they would consult you so they didn't make the teacher mad or anything. <laughs> um, the teacher was actually surprisingly supportive, but definitely outside of class, I did have a couple people reach out to me and help them study for exams or just give them, um, you know, tips on, you know, dealing with the German, I never made it explicit to them that I had been experienced in German until like the final exam day before the teacher came in class because um, they were all, you know, just talking about German and whatever. And I was like, yeah, I was just kind of in here for the, the easy credit. Um, and they're like, yeah, we kind of figured that by, you know, by this point. But right. Um, yeah, definitely. There were a lot of people reaching out to me for sure. That's cool. Um, what uh, I don't I don't think you said it in the beginning so when i'm when i'm typing i'm listening but then i, I hate the miss yeah. and so uh, if i if you did touch on this i do i do apologize but um what was your interest in getting into german like why just out of curiosity where did that come from because i know everybody sure. has a different story yeah um i guess the main one for me would be that in high school um we only had two languages offered it was spanish and german um, and I personally, I know you're, um, you know, you have a little piece of uh, Spanish because you, you know, you have a little piece of that because you've learned it. Um, I think Spanish is kind of like a it's, a, it's the typical language that a lot of people go to in the U.S. because of the, you know, the Southern right. influence and things like that. And we didn't have French. We didn't have Russian like some schools. We didn't have Greek or Latin. Uh, so I figured I wanted to do German. Um, and my friend also talked really highly of the class, too. So that was kind of my um my gateway into the language learning community. Um, eventually I started getting, you know, I started expanding out. I went to Esperanto after German. I tried mm -hmm. that out for a little bit. Um, yeah. 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 I, um, uh, what's funny is I had a, com uh, I think I was talking to, I, I can't keep like, it's weird. I, I don't talk to a lot of people. And then this last yeah. week I've talked to so many people, but um, I can't remember if I said it on a podcast or maybe I was speaking with one of my friends privately, but I said, in regards to Spanish, I said, people say that you cannot learn something that you don't want to learn. And that is absolutely false because, yep. and, and my, my feelings on Spanish now are, I really, really wish that I would have went, like, I have a, I have a respect for any language now. Yes. Um, yes. At the time in high school, I definitely had no interest. I felt like it was like a forced thing mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. And I, I definitely wish I knew what I knew now, but I guess that's hindsight's twenty twenty, and that always happens as you get old, I guess. But, yep. um, <laughs> but like um, in terms of Spanish, I get what you're saying because it, it you do feel, you know, when you're in America, you feel just by default, it's like, well, okay, I've, I've got to learn Spanish. Um, and I remember talking to... Uh, somebody from Canada. Oh, uh, well, I, I interviewed for a job position at link one time. And when I was, yeah. I was, I was talking to, uh, Mark and Steve Kaufman and I was telling them about Spanish. And I think Mark had even made the joke. He was like, well, that's how a lot of people in Canada feel like you have to learn French, like French, French yeah. you know? Um, but, uh, that's cool that you, you chose German. See, in my high school, all we had was Spanish. There was no, yeah. uh, there wasn't any. So that's, that's cool that you now, my wife, who is from a, I don't know if I'd call it a smaller area than me, but probably a smaller area than me. We're, it's not like we're in a big metropolis. There, there's yeah. like 5,000 people where I live. It's not huge. But um, her school offered uh, German. And then, yeah. did you, I thought your school offered German. She's, she's Japanese. 
Oh, well, they offer Japanese. Oh. All right. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, even, uh... <laughs> that's even crazier. Yeah. Uh, yeah what, maybe? Through a satellite. Okay, yeah. And I know, see, Ta Taswell, which is mm -hmm. the other school in the same county as me, offered Japanese, but oh, where am I? Huh? Her college. Oh, her college had German. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but yeah, at where I went to school, there was. Well, I, you know what? I take that back. I'm, I know I'm talking a lot here, but it's just all. It's all. I want to make sure I get the correct information here. My school had yeah. Latin. My school did have Latin. Oh, okay. So. Spanish and French, and it wasn't Japanese, maybe Latin or something. Hers had Spanish, French. Okay, all right. Oh. So we're, we're there now. So anyway, but yeah. it, you do, Phil. Um, see, uh, hold on, see. Um, uh, took Spanish from seventh grade to twelfth grade in Tennessee. Okay. Uh, and then Nick says my high school only had German. That's, are you, are you, where, that's interesting. I would assume, I don't, uh, if you're from the United States, that would blow my mind if they didn't Absolutely, have Spanish. Yeah, Spanish would be the go-to for most. Yeah. Clients. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I know in America, their Spanish teachers are actually, I think, considered critical needs because there's not enough people to teach. Like you've got people who are really? literally going through curriculum but they don't speak Spanish, but it's because they have to have somebody there to teach the class. Interesting. Uh, there's a, like, a independent school um, district that only has one school. It has a elementary, middle, and high school uh, right down the road from me here. And they uh, just introduced, I had a friend that went there um, in their elementary school probably years or two, maybe two years ago. Um, they just introduced Mandarin Chinese for elementary school students. Oh, um. Yeah, that's I mean, it's a good way to start, man. Um, I know that this is going to sound like the super cliche thing to say, but like my son, who is three, he watches a show on Amazon Prime called <laughs> Ni Hao Kai Lan. Yep. yep. It's for, OK, it's from Nick, whatever it's from, but yep. it, it's on Amazon. But I guess somebody else mm -hmm. produces or whatever. But he says Chinese words like um, and it's not like obviously great. He's three. He yeah. doesn't speak English. Yeah. Great. Yeah. But he speaks chinese words like it's pretty crazy yeah it's oh, like a dora kind of right well he and he does that with dora too he'll say stuff oh. in dora yeah and then i'll uh sometimes like um you know I'll, I'll say oh do you want to learn how to say something in spanish and he'll say yes and i'll, I'll say something and he'll you know obviously yeah. but butcher it yeah. but it's <laughs> yeah uh let's see here we got a couple comments uh to um i've got Okay, so Rose T says high school had Spanish, French, and Latin. Okay, that seems... I, for, I forgot about Latin. I guess a lot of people did teach Latin's, that. Latin's, yeah, kind of a U.S. thing, too. Yeah, and I guess I guess the reason is because if you're going to go into, like, um, I guess, like, maybe linguistics medical, or something, medical. Or, or medical for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to say linguistics. Well, I guess linguistics would make sense to an extent mm -hmm. because of yeah. so much being based from the Latin... For, from Latin. Uh, okay, Nick, it's just, Nick says they're Polish. Okay, so that that would make sense oh, for versus the German, for the yeah. German thing. Um, okay, so um, yeah, so okay, so that's, how old are you now? How how long have you uh, been out of so college? I'm 19. I'm about to turn 20 here soon. Okay, so this is still like fresh, like yeah. out of, fresh out of college, studying and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um. Now I'm interested in, and you said you're, you're currently learning or you're dabbling in Hindi. Yes, yes, I am. What, what's the what's the interest there? Uh, to be honest, I've been asked that a lot recently. Um, I can't entirely answer that because I don't really know myself. Um, sure. I really like the idea of having um, an Indo-European language in India, which is a country in Asia. Uh, right. The idea of having something similar to you know more closely related to German than to, um, for example, you know, Chinese, uh, mm -hmm. Mandarin or whatever, um, is fascinating to me, especially because it is spoken in an Asian country. Uh, you can see the divide between where the Asian influences, um, from the other, you know, languages in India, uh, versus the roots of, um, you know, the Proto-Indo-European, uh, that it has. I think that's really interesting. Yeah, that's cool. How's the, um, I've never, I've never, I don't think I've ever studied Hindi. Like, I, I mean, I, like when I say dabble, cause I've dabbled literally in everything, but when I say dabble, I do mean more than just testing out a Duolingo course and stuff. So yep. I don't even know if I'd say I dabbled in Hindi. Is it subject, object, verb, or is it 
subject verb object. S O V. Yeah. Um, on top of that, they use post positions rather than prepositions as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so for example, if you wanted to say, I study in America, uh, how you would say that in Hindi is I America in study am is the word order for that. All right. That sounds, (laughs) that sounds cool. I'm running into a little bit of, uh, it's, it's not quite the same thing, but in terms of kind of the identifier of what's happening being mm-hmm. after the word in Greek, they do that a lot. Yep. Yep. So that's, that's been a real inter- That That's, yep. uh, what about the, um, do you find any issues with the script or anything? I know a lot of people always have issues with scripts, but I've never really, that's been one area that I don't feel that I've ever really struggled in is learning yeah, a new alphabet. I, I can agree with you on that. Um, I remember when I was kind of looking at Russian for a little bit, it maybe took me an hour or so to learn Cyrillic. Um, mm-hmm. It's a simple alphabet. Obviously, with Hindi, um, they use an Abu Gita, meaning that there are syllable blocks uh, rather than, you know, letters for every sound. Right. Um, so learning it did take, you know, it wasn't like anything I was used to before. Obviously, I'm used to alphabets. Um, right. But uh, it took me a couple days to get used to it. But now that I've kind of been reading with it for, um, you know, about a week or, or so now, um, it's definitely not as bad as it was in the beginning, but it was definitely um, intimidating at the at the start. For yeah. Sure. Do they do the um the, do they do the thing with the alphabet like Arabic does, where it has a beginning, like it can look a certain way in the beginning, or if it's in the middle of a word or after? Nope. Nope. There are no um, consonant changes depending on position. It's all the same, um, okay. but the verbs do change the position. Um, and you can use compound consonants as well, which will change the look of, um, you know, the the uh, the consonant as well. So that can kind of make it a little complicated. Um, I can say that's what does make it the hardest, but it's really not horrible. Um, yeah. Okay. That's not that's not too bad. Yeah. Um, when you first dove in, like, um, what is your kind of like? Um... Well, I mean, I, I guess study method would be. Did you just My jump concept. in on? Yeah, like, did you jump yeah. into Duolingo, or are you yeah, so, doing other um, stuff? I guess I've dabbled enough to kind of have a a uh, kind of a method um, for, for peaking interest, I guess you could say. Um, initially, what I'll do is I'll just go online, and I'll see if they're, you know, first I'll start a Duolingo. Um, sure. It's free. You don't have to pay anything. You can if you want. Um, kind of get a little taste for the language, see what it's like. Um, if you're really interested into it, um, personally, I like grammar study a lot, so mm-hmm. I'll go out and I'll buy a textbook like Teach Yourself or Routledge's uh, Colloquial. I really like Colloquial okay. a lot. Yeah. Um, I dabbled on Duolingo for I tried it previously. Um, I hated the tree, but I did <laughs> like the language, um, so I went ahead and I bought a textbook for Hindi, um, and I kind of went back and I learned how to read properly. Um, read the script and mm-hmm. then i went back on duolingo uh started enjoying it a little bit more now that i kind of knew what i was doing a little bit right um so i'd say my process is definitely just start free and then if you're starting to get invested then that's probably the time you should um you know kick things up a little bit more seriously yeah for sure because because i think um i think the thing that we forget myself included uh, i had a big i mean essentially i don't even know how to say it outside of saying i had a come to Jesus meeting with myself about kind of my study habits. And I'm actually going to make a video on that soon, but I think people often forget uh, because there's people that criticize all these language apps, myself included, literally every time I talk, it's criticizing, but I do, I do think that they do good, but I I think that they're not there to get you fluent in any language. Not one thing can't get you fluent in, in a language. They're, yeah. they're there to get you introduced to it and maybe give you a little yep. bit of vocabulary or something oh, like yeah. that. But like, um, and I think too, uh, I think learning the written sounds via an app, I think sometimes can be good, but then you look at languages like the way that they teach, um, hiragana and I, I, I can read Japanese. Well, I can yep. read hiragana and katakana and I can read mm-hmm. several hundred kanji, but <laughs> the, the way that they teach it is terrible. Yes, absolutely. Um, the Arabic course, so I'm going to compare the Duolingo Hindi course and then the Arabic course a little bit, kind mm-hmm. of uh, contrast, because they both use you know foreign scripts. 
Yeah. Uh, the Arabic course I thought uh, on Duolingo at least was excellent at teaching the alphabet. Um, it taught, you know, a letter at a time, then it'll do another letter. And then what it'll do is it'll combine the two letters to make sounds and you read practicing, um, you know, certain letters combined in combination. Yep. Uh, the Hindi course, on the other hand, and I think the Japanese does this too with hiragana, um, just kind of has you read individual characters. Um, and you can't learn that way. You gotta, it, it'll start you off with each character and you'll just do four lessons of just reading that, uh, no words or anything. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get thrown into basics one. And then all of a sudden you have full sentences using the entire script and you've never seen a word connected before. Yeah. Um, horrible way of doing it in my opinion, but no, I agree. That's what hung me up. Cause again, I, I mean, I'm, I don't speak Japanese, but I, I know enough Japanese to yeah. where I, you know, and I remember when I was doing the course, like you said, you would do that, and then once, as soon as you hit basics one, it was more than hiragana. It was hiragana, katakana, and kanji, yep. with no <laughs> no prior introduction at all. Yeah. So that's that's really really I don't know. It, it's definitely weird. That's cool. Um, do you uh, when you do you do you take? I know a lot of people do this. I'm I'm trying to get into this myself, and I'm really really bad for it. But um, do you do? Uh, do you take notes and stuff? Do you have like a notebook and you take notes and stuff yes. like that? Yes, I am a major fan of um, note taking in general. I think note taking is a good way, uh, not only just to kind of consolidate information, um, it's a good marker of showing your progress through mm -hmm. time. Um, sure. If you go through a textbook and you take notes on, for example, just all of the grammar, um, ideally, if you're studying properly, um, that means that whatever you have filled out in your notebook, you have in your brain. Um, if you don't have a notebook, I mean, sure, it doesn't mean that you can't access it um, in memory right. whatsoever, but um, it could mean that you don't know it as well as if you take the time out of your day to actually sit here, um, write grammar points, make sentences with those points in mm -hmm. them. Um, and then, you know, instead of writing down all the vocab, I'll throw that in a memorized deck or a Quizlet um, deck or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, but yeah, I totally, I agree with note taking 100%. That's cool. I actually had a, uh, I was having a conversation with, um, my, my buddy Evan, who he teaches, uh, English in Japan and he was talking about his process. Cause I'm trying to, like, he, I mean, he's, a, he's a teacher and he, and I was talking to him about my struggles with some stuff and he was like, dude, he was like, it's literally my job. Like, yeah. let, let me help you out with some study techniques and stuff. And, um, and he, he speaks, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Korean, Japanese, um, he sent me a video. He did. I mean, he he has literally done speeches in front of Japanese yeah. audiences and stuff. So he knows what he's doing. But he um he he said two things today that really struck out to me. And I, I'll see if this resonates with you or, or you know even your take on it because I, I thought they were very interesting. Yeah. One, writing down something creates in a weird way an intimate relationship with what you're writing down, and it's it's gonna have that connection because you've created it. Yep. on paper so it's going to help that stick in your mind yeah um sorry to cut you off if you were no, no go ahead one. yeah uh interesting uh kind of with that my german professor uh she was from germany she moved over to the u.s and uh, married a uh, an american and lives here now um when i took german last semester um she said an interesting quote it's a proverb in german i thought it was really interesting um, I don't remember what it is in German, of course, but I remember the translation. It was through the hand to the mind um, yeah. is what they said. Uh, I thought that was really interesting. That kind of does, um, you know, connect with what you were saying and what your friend was kind of saying too. Yeah, that's it's yeah. A, it, it, he, he said that and that really struck with me. And then the other thing, I, this could be used for other languages, but I mean, I, I could see where this would be specifically Japanese, but if you, if you do mnemonics at all, he was talking about how, like, for kanji, uh, I don't know if you are overly familiar with when pe people yeah. will create the stories and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yep. And so he'll write something down, and I was like, well, what if you forget it? And he said, I make a new story. And I said, okay. And he said, why would I use the same story? Because it didn't help me remember it the first time. I create yep. a new story. Yep. And Absolutely. I was, it blew my mind. Mm -hmm. yep. I thought that that was a very interesting yes. concept. Because, yeah, yes, you go... Definitely. You know, if you study, especially if you, you know, when I was doing remembering the kanji, some of that stuff wouldn't stick. And now that I think about it, I'm like, why did I not make a new story? Because it's yeah. obviously not working. Yeah, it obviously wasn't meaningful enough for you to remember it the first time. Yeah, yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, oh, definitely. Let's see, here we got uh, learning scripts is always the most fun thing. Sorry, I know these are from a while ago. Learning scripts is always the most fun thing. I agree, dude. I, I could learn yeah. alphabets, man. And I agree with you. Uh, Russian, Cyrillic looked way more... Difficult uh, than it is. Yeah. It's super easy. Yeah. It is. Like, their spelling is kind of weird because of where the intonation on the word is. So that yeah, definitely makes it a little... And all that, you know. Yeah, But other than that, man, it's not... I, it was honestly one of the more the easier alphabets. Absolutely, yeah. The interesting thing about Cyrillic is that um, they invented it specifically. Um, so obviously, every language that uses Cyrillic uses a separate um, kind of variation of it. Mm-hmm. There are letters there and letters that are new. Um, the interesting thing about Cyrillic for all of those languages, though, is that every letter that they have um, is specific to that language's sound. Mm-hmm. Um, English, you can have things spelled 15 different ways and they'll sound exactly the same. Um, in Russian, though, each letter that they have um, is for a specific sound in the language, yeah. uh, which is really interesting yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah, Even though the spelling can be weird because of the stress of the word, it's still yeah. it's still phonetic. Exactly, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and actually, it's funny. I'll, I'll, I'll bring up one more thing that my buddy had said earlier. You were talking about how English language and we can spell stuff a different way. Yeah. And he said, uh, he said, the only way I can compare kanji to having you understand it in an English sense is that our alphabet does not match our language. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. we definitely need a new alphabet. Um, but yeah, I, I, I loved Russian, uh, which I learned, uh, funny enough, even though I'm, I'm just now kind of studying Korean, I learned Hangul several years ago and I thought it yeah. was, um, that's very intuitive. I don't know. Have you ever studied that? Like, have you ever I, looked... that is actually one of the alphabets I haven't even looked at. I've heard this from every single person that have studied it. Uh, yeah. They have all said it is the most, uh, they said it's a, the simplest and B it's the one that makes the most sense in everything that they've ever looked at before. It is man. It's, it's so weird. And like, what's weird is, you know, you think about, I mean, other languages that have, you know, the, the, symbols you know or yeah, whatever you yeah. know the the sound representatives instead of mm-hmm. like an actual letter but like i don't know man like i picked up it took me so long to learn hi- just hiragana mm-hmm. like i'm talking yeah. like a month and then hangul you can learn it with no exposure to korean you can learn in a day easy that's insane yeah, yeah. no i that's the one that i haven't actually tried at all um i did have a very small japanese phase i'm talking probably two days Mm. Um, I tried cause I didn't want to go out and buy a textbook or anything. I tried on Duolingo and honestly the course put me, um, <laughs> kind of let me down. I didn't like it. So I was like, you know, maybe I'll come back to it, but I'm not going back to Duolingo for that until I can. Read it. <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> I can tell you, uh, from personal experience of, of trying to learn Japanese over the last 11 years, uh, if you ever want to feel the absolute worst about yourself that you possibly can study Japanese, yeah. man, cause it will, <laughs> It will strip away every bit of confidence yeah. you have. Like, yeah. it's not even funny. It's like, it's, it will absolutely destroy everything. Yeah, no, I've, I've put that on a separate tier on the list. I've been waiting for that one. I haven't built myself up to that one quite yet. Yeah. You know. Here, here's an interesting uh, thing, um, or maybe not interesting. That was a weird segue. What a stupid segue that was. Here's an interesting uh, <laughs> But like, um, or just something that caught my interest thinking yeah. about is, do you find, because I know that this is kind of, um, uh, people talk about this in the language community, but do you find, do you use different study methods for different languages? Because, uh, you know, not everything is equal. Nope. Is my internet connection going down again? Yes. Oh, there it is. Um, okay. The way that I look at it, so, um... Oh yeah, the way that I look at it is um, just like not every Duolingo tree is the same. Um, Mm -hmm. Every language isn't the same. So every way that you study every language should not be the same um, as well. Uh, When I was studying German, I didn't take nearly as much time studying the pronunciation um, because obviously it's more phonetic than English and it's, you know, one of the easier ones out there. Um, But then when I went to Hindi, I had to take a week alone learning how to read um and then now still when i take notes on it i have to use the transliteration just to make sure that i'm familiar with reading right 
Um, and I think it's important that with languages that aren't similar to your own, um, you do have to put a little bit more extra attention to it um, to make sure that you can kind of reel it back into what you, you understand. Because obviously, German is a little bit more closer to English than Hindi is. Um, and then right. Japanese is even farther than both of those. Um, so yeah, for sure. Yeah, trying to get over that hurdle of direct translation versus actually speaking the way that they speak is a huge hurdle. Yep. And it does. Absolutely. And, and the further you get away from your native language, native language it gets. I, I know, uh, and I'm, I'm sure you can give examples too. I know in Japanese, for example, if you misplace your phone, you don't say, hey, do you know where my phone is? Uh, or, hey, where's my phone? You say, do you know my phone? Do you know my phone? Like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So there's a little weird it, things so like that. Enough, yes. Um, interestingly enough, I've kind of, um, I remember as a kid growing up, I was kind of always interested in languages. Um, I remember, I'm sure everyone had this phase where they thought different languages were just the same thing, but with different words. Yep. Um, so, yep. Uh, growing up, I've kind of, obviously, I've left that mindset. I'm now under the impression that every language has their own way of saying different things. So, for example, like you said, um, rather than asking in Japanese, where is my phone? Um, you say, do you know my phone? I always go into a language assuming that everything that you already know is not translated literally, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, can help and can hurt sometimes too, because um, I wouldn't want to go to Japan and just assume, you know, maybe I misplaced my phone and I wouldn't want to ask <laughs> someone, do you know where my phone is? Uh, they'd look at me like I was stupid. Like right. they had no idea what I was talking right. about. Um, so I just go in the mindset of assuming nothing at all um, because you never know what languages have to offer. They're all different. Um, so, yeah. yeah. How did you get over um... – Sorry, man. I, I I know that I jump all over the place. But that's oh, just you're the, good. You're good. That's just the way that my my brain. Uh, mm -hmm. And like I said, if you if you've watched anything on my channel, that's yep. Yep. I don't I don't script anything, and I just go because I, I feel like that's the most genuine uh, thing. But in terms of uh, German, and I know you're talking about grammar. How um how how did you deal with the cases? Like, did, yeah. is that something that you so, had trouble? So um, kind of like everything grammatically it's just one of those things you got to get used to um initially the accusative case is obviously the easiest because you know what the direct object is in a sentence um once you start adding the genitive um which is the possessive kind of gets a little bit weirder because you have to add s's after some nouns and others you don't um and then the dative is definitely the worst one in german in my opinion because um, with German, I, know, I think you dabbled in it a little bit, mm -hmm. at least, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm sure you know some verbs take um, dative case, some verbs take accusative case, um, and then you have the whole prepositional system in German, which is a whole mess of, you know, a completely other topic um, where they take, you know, some will take genitive, some will take accusative, and then you got to depend on, or uh, some will take dative, some will take accusative, um, depending on if you're moving or you're you're sitting down somewhere or if you're uh, so yeah the whole the whole mess I don't think it was the cases per se it was the the prepositions and the verbs that forced those cases was totally the worst part about that whole thing. yeah I remember um, when I was uh, studying Russian a little bit I asked my teacher one time about cases and she said the only example I can give you to show you how important they are, because I asked her, I said, if I use the wrong case, will I be understood? And she said, well, yeah. you can be, but I'm going to give you an example of why they're important. And I said, okay. She said, if you're standing in Moscow and you say, mm -hmm. now obviously I'm not going to say the correct word because I don't remember, but just as an example, yeah. she said, if you say pizza, well, the A on the end represents a certain case and people know that means, hey, I'm selling pizza, come buy pizza. Mm -hmm. But if you yeah. say pizza, that makes it a different case, which means where can I buy pizza? And I was like, yeah. that sounds terrible. <laughs> like It does, yeah. Um, the thing with Russian that makes the case system completely different than German, too. Um, German's easy because you have the word for the. Um, you mm -hmm. have the three genders. The only thing that you change in the cases are the genders, and sometimes you'll add like an N on the end of a word or whatever. Right. Um, Russian has no articles whatsoever so the only time that you can tell a word from a 
one in the different cases, you have to change the ending, um, making one word have six different possibilities um, at times, which is absolutely mind boggling to me. And I am terrified of getting to that point in Russian at, at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's a, I feel like it's an absolute uh, motive. I mean, I, you have to be dedicated to learn Russian. Like, there's no doubt about it, man. Because it's and that was the yeah. thing. Like, I was yeah. learning it, and I wanted to learn it, but like, I had no, there was no connection outside of just mm-hmm. I like languages. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, sometimes you think you like something, and all of a sudden you study it, and you're like, maybe I don't really like this <laughs> yeah. as much as I thought I did. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So let's. I want to switch topic because I don't think I've, I've talked to anybody about this before. I was just thinking about this today. Um, mm-hmm. What do, how, how do your friends and family react to your love of languages? Yeah, um, it was weird at first because they would, um, they obviously knew I took German in high school. So they were like, oh, he's, he's learning German. It's just one of those things. It's not like he has a, uh, I call it an addiction to be honest, because that's oh, what it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden they start seeing packages come in, um, you know, I have a Spanish <laughs> book i have an italian book i just bought another german book all of a sudden i have an icelandic book now um i remember the first thing my dad said to me was why don't you stick with one language and um just learn that and then go to the next one i was like i don't think you understand i gotta i gotta these are for later after Mm -hmm. i'm done i mean i knew in my mind that i was gonna you know go this far in one and then skip and go to the next one because that's just you know a lot of people have the language bug that's just how it works yep um my friends are more supportive for sure they think it's like they think you have to be a genius to learn languages um you don't have to be anyone can do it um it just depends on how you're doing it that really you know defines your success in language learning Mm -hmm. Um, but i'd say my friends were more supportive for sure my parents i don't think really understand it um but yeah do you do you find um do you find kind of the idea I I I did make a video on this exact topic but do do you find the idea of people saying I don't have the language gene or I'm not a genius do you find that to be somewhat without them meaning it that way but do you find that to be uh a little maybe downplaying how much time and effort you've put into it and I, again I I don't think that they would mean it in that sense yeah. but Yeah no I totally know what you mean yeah um yeah, I think, yeah, some people kind of just assume that people have the, uh, you know, uh, there's another one out there, like, I don't have the the music um, gene, I can't play an instrument, I have no skill to do that. Right. Um, anyone can do it. And I think it completely undermines the amount of time and energy that goes into even learning, um, not even a language completely, but just how to build simple sentences. I remember, um, when I first looked hindi i had no idea what was going on and it took me you know probably 30 minutes just to figure out why i couldn't say um you know why there's a difference between i am eating and i eat um Mm -hmm. although you still use the verb to be in it so that doesn't make any sense but um i think they completely undermine it and i'm sure some people you know the same people that say i don't have the language bug um probably are the same people and i'm generalizing here obviously sure that um you know kind of believe the whole language should be learned because it's useful not because you want to do it yeah Um, which is i i have a big i have a big opinion on that as well um which i'm sure you you also do yourself you know yeah well well my my thought is like for example uh which i don't go to work anymore because i'm working from home right now but uh But when I would go to work, you know, and it was never in a negative sense, but people would be like, you know, play this game, play this game. And I'm like, I like, I know that you don't understand what I'm saying, but I don't have time to play games because my games, my, what you get out of playing games is what I get out of doing. Yep. Duolingo. Duolingo. Exactly. And so it's, it's a weird thing. I I try to explain that to him and I'll make mention of it all the time. And they're like, play this game. And I'm like, ah, and they're like, oh, the language thing. And I'm like, but that's. That is my yeah. that is my video Hobby, games. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah, and I, video games are hobbies, languages are hobbies too. That's just you yep. know. And then yeah, I mean I've had not necessarily had people ask, but you know that there's always that question of why, but it's like I mean, I don't ask why you dumped ninety nine hours into Final Fantasy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like yeah. 
you know, you enjoy it. Kudos to you. Yeah, I I yeah. also enjoy it. I just, if I had to choose where my time was going, languages are going to take the first. Absolutely, yeah. Which is a struggle yeah. struggle right now because of Animal Crossing being out, and I love some Animal yes. Crossing. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think you made a video on your channel about this. Correct me if I'm wrong um, about the whole learning a language because it's useful versus because you want to. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about that? Yeah, well, um, I don't know what I said in that video, but uh, I'm going to tell you how, how I feel right now. Yep. And that is, um, I think that, you know, if a language is useful, but it's not something you want to learn, that it's useless. Yes, um, yeah. For example, in America, Spanish is useful. Mm -hmm. If you hate Spanish, it is useless. Absolutely. Um, and it's a waste of your time to try to learn it. Um, and it kind of yeah. goes into the same thing of what's the, you, you people always Google this. What's the easiest language to learn? The one that you want to. The one you want to learn, yeah. Yep. Because if you want to learn it, you're going to have the motivation to stick with it. Mm -hmm. Um for example, you can you can tell people all day long Esperanto is the easiest thing to learn, but once they get into it and they're like, wait, I can't go to a country, I can't do this, I can't, you know, it's yeah, yeah. it's kind of just like, Bleh. which I stuck with it. I loved Esperanto personally, and I really yeah. want to rekindle my Esperanto, but that's a whole different thing. But uh, oh, perfect! Oh, that's a good segue into Fingtam. I've mentioned Aaron on every single video so yes. far that I've done this live podcast. Yes. But uh, he, he had sent me a message about doing, uh, he wanted to do a live thing like this where we just spoke Esperanto. That and, would be awesome, yeah. And I said, uh, I said, man, that would be such a struggle. And he said, that's kind of the point. Like, just see where we're at and just go. Yeah. So, Aaron, I don't, I don't think yeah. he's watching, but there we go, man. That's, I'm thinking I'm four for four now in mentioning Aaron. And yeah. I, at some point, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it around. I mentioned Lindy every time too, so we'll get there. I'll get, I'll get Lindy into, but, yes. um. Who are just out of curiosity? Who are, um, like, who are the people that you watch and like? I, I haven't. I don't think I've really asked anybody that in the past. But just out of curiosity, who, yeah. like, what polyglots um, motivate you? Like, who who do you find and, and who do you find to be genuine in that in that uh -huh. regard? Polyglot progress. Polyglot progress. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. uh, was definitely the first one that I kind of um, bumped into. I don't know if you're familiar with um, mm -hmm. Matt and Abigail. Yeah, Matt and Abigail, mm -hmm. awesome people. Um, unfortunately, never got to talk to them, and I know they're both taking breaks from the channel right now, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, that's easily my favorite um, channel out there. I still go back and I'll watch. Um, if I ever want to study, I think the easiest way for me to study is if I have you know, some video on in the background about languages, just mm -hmm. something to get me in the, in the mindset. Um, yeah. Obviously, I watch your channel. Um, I've been in your live streams before. I've mm -hmm. seen Fing Tang. Mm. Oh my gosh, I can't speak today. Yeah, no, I... uh, like his videos, his live streams are awesome. Yeah, I love um, Aaron, man. He's like a good dude. His 11 hour challenges <laughs> yeah. of Italian and Thai, that was ridiculous. I feel sorry for the guy for that. Um, yeah. He did one uh, for German, too. He did, yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember that for sure. Um, I never really had a thing for. I, I did, I do watch Lindy's videos, but mm -hmm. I never really. Um, I'm not a regular viewer per sure. se because I guess her um, her advice and her content kind of appeals to a different audience than what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. um, she focuses more on, um, you know, obviously Korean, Japanese, Mandarin. Right. Um, she, she does, you know, a lot of Asian languages and her content kind of, um, and obviously she speaks Afrikaans too. Um, her content kind of goes towards that um, side of the, you know, the language learning community who really focus on those specifically. Mm -hmm. I like a completely different group. Um, and I think that's why I really liked Polyglot Progress was mm -hmm. because they kind of shared that similar um, interest with just kind of out of the, out of the blue languages, things you don't really study a whole lot. Like Matt did a one week Swahili um, video I still watch. I think that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, just the idea of sitting down and studying something for a certain amount of time, um, just kind of you know out there a little bit. I think is phenomenal. Um, mm -hmm. And then your study streams are 
absolutely awesome because it's a good motivator for a lot of people out there i'm sure right um yeah yeah i i agree with you on on polyglot progress because uh i think abigail one of her strongest languages is bulgarian right yes yeah which she, is she so random one absolutely yeah she actually was the one who piqued my interest um it's on the list i i have a list um and it, it made I the agree. list because she made a video on her ad one for you know 90 days of bulgarian i was like yeah. that's a really weird language to mm -hmm. get into but see um, they're they're in a good spot too because like i feel like their motivation is so much higher because they they have each other yes um absolutely. and that is having having that kind of like not that i expect my wife to just pick up a <laughs> Duolingo, but like, but in terms yeah. of like, they both have that passion. It's not even like yes. one would be doing it because the other one won't. Like, they both love language, and I think that that's that had to have helped them so much. Absolutely, I know motivation is kind of hard to come by. It's like you know, yeah. sometimes I'm really feeling the study. Other times I'm like, you know, why would I want to study when I just could, you know, go on YouTube for ten hours and do nothing all day. Yeah. Um, easily having someone that shares that passion totally makes you know, learning a lot more fun mm -hmm. um, and it adds meaning to it as well. You kind of have an external motivator out there for you. Yeah. Um, also someone to hold you accountable too. It's really nice. Yeah. No, I agree with that, man. Um, I, I do. I miss, I miss their videos. Um, and yeah. I really, really miss, um, uh, uh, Angela, uh, Pat passion for passion for languages, passion for, uh, dreaming passions. For, yeah. Passion for dream. Yeah. I think her Twitter is passion for Lang. And then yeah, yeah. YouTube is passion. I for forgot dream. one more channel actually thinking back. Um, Ophelia Vert. Yeah. Yeah. Love she, her channel too. She does, she does good stuff. I know she's yeah. doing a lot of stuff with, uh, a Dutch and Dutch her and, uh, major right now. Her yeah. Grad school hopefully, sure. hopefully she, can. and you know, the, the beautiful thing about all this is, uh, and I actually, uh, here we go. Lindy, here we go. Uh, I actually touched on this in my uh, interview. I believe I touched on this in my interview with Lindy that I had. Um, what I, she, I think she's getting it up on her channel in the next week or so. But um, people like the people that you've mentioned, I mm -hmm. think, are appealing because YouTube is not their job. They're doing yes. it because they love it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't, I don't strap my, yeah, I don't, I don't strap my boots on and sit on my computer at nine o'clock at night because I'm getting paid for it. Like I love languages. Um, and, and I want to share that journey with people and whatever. And I think that that's why all those people are, and you know, they go through ups and downs, you know, I mean, I've taken yeah, breaks on sure. this channel. Ophelia is doing all the stuff with colleges. She's got some stuff going on and I know Angela's got some stuff going on and I mean you know it's just it's they're real people and I think that that's what makes the connection so much stronger to a lot of people yes that's why I couldn't really relate to um Moses Laoshu 55,000 mm -hmm. um, just because he sits down I think you know I, he hasn't made a whole bunch of like study method videos in a while probably five years or so mm -hmm. Um, he would sit down from morning to night and just study all day long. And I just don't think that's realistic for, you know, 90% of the community. Who right. just, I don't know about you, but if, you know, I, after an hour of studying something, I'm like pretty burnt out for the day. I can't do it for hours after that. Yeah. He, um, he is one, one thing I will say about him, um, that I normally go against this. I think he does. There's something special about him. Yeah, because because of the ability, to, dude. He's been doing that since he was eighteen, studying for twelve, fourteen hours a day. I could not imagine yeah. myself doing his, that. His his schedule now is he has he'll take four classes a day, an hour a piece, and then also he will then practice some of his other languages, thirty minutes mm -hmm. or an hour here or there. I mean, yeah. it's all day. He does not stop and. That is something special because the fact that you can continue to do that is insane. Like, that's a special thing. And I'm sure it has something to do with his, um, so I'm, I'm sure you're, you know, you're probably aware he doesn't intend on getting mm -hmm. C1, C2 in every language. I think, what is it, upwards of, I think he's looked at probably, what, 20, 30 languages by now at this point? Oh, yeah, he, I mean, um, it's, it's... And, and it's random stuff too. Urdu, random. like Urdu, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, Amharic was the one that I saw mm -hmm. on there. That's a that's a really weird language. Mm -hmm. Um, I think 
what makes it easy for him to be able to do that for 12 hours a day is a he has languages to practice mm-hmm. uh, and people to practice with he's in an area in ohio that's just abundant of mm-hmm. so many different people and he'll Wait. go places just to well, speak with them and he's in a he's in a better spot now because he just moved to phoenix yeah exactly so he's in um, a so it's even plenty, more people plenty of people um, and then on top of that, he is still in the kind of the beginner love phase of these languages where it's not hard to, you know, get up and study a language because you're still, it's still new and it's still mm-hmm. interesting. And, you know, I, I know for sure that studying the beginning phases of Dutch when I was dabbling in that after German a little bit, um, it was it was new, it was exciting because it was like, what can I pick from German and, can, you know, compare these um, yeah. versus hitting the intermediate phase in German, it's just kind of hard to keep that motivation. I'm sure that's got to do something with his, you know, yeah. ridiculous study habits. Yeah. Well, and, and the yeah. other thing I like is that he, uh, I always feel like when I talk positive, people are like, that's just because you're a shill for him. But like, like I, I, I said this before I've worked for Moses and that's, he never lies to people. Mm. He's he he on his live stream. Somebody be like, speak, you know, Georgian, and he'll be like, I haven't haven't touched Georgian in three months. Like I'm super rusty on it. Like, Mm -hmm. and I I think that that's good instead of just being like, eh, maybe later. Trying to make up, yeah, yeah. Keep on pushing it down, yeah, for sure. But but then also acknowledging that he's not trying to be a C one level in everything. I think is also is also important. Um, But I, I definitely can see the. Like I, I get why people uh, don't watch don't Moses's watch videos. videos. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like I, I can, I you can show me anything. Like I love, um, I love. I think Shalma, New York, right? Shalma, the Chinese, the guy that speaks Chinese. Yeah, um, um, I love. I think I, know who you're, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I I love watching his content, but I can also watch that and be like, all right, I get why people don't like it. Um, same thing with Steve, Steve Kaufman. He makes videos yeah. of him talking in front of a camera, no editing, just no editing, spouting yeah. stuff. Boring. Yeah. But I love that stuff. But His I can videos totally are extremely see. Extremely informative for sure. Well, he's. The amount of knowledge that guy has is insane. Yes. Like, um, he's also got a, a lifetime of wisdom behind him. So. Yeah, and I love people. People all. Even uh, what's weird is people leave either comments or like uh he doesn't do live streams a lot now but like they'll do it and they did a live stream earlier today they and it was him and mark his son and then like a couple of people that use link and they were like uh, in the comment sections it was like oh man you know is getting too old can i learn languages steve's 70 he's over 70 yeah isn't he? like, yeah he's five seven, or something yeah. isn't he yep and he's he uh and he even said he's learned or something he speaks uh yeah, I think. Well, and that's the the cool thing about Steve is he's always been honest about that. He said that there's, I think, yeah, I think five or six that he can swap to, no problem. And then the other and ones. And the other ones. Kind of, yeah, you know. and he and that's what he said. You know, like he, I know he struggles with Korean, and he always says, you know, if he has something in Korean coming up, he'll spend the week before kind of mm-hmm. just rehashing and stuff to get into it. Like he can't just flip to it. Um, and I appreciate the honesty. I, th- I think yeah. that that's a, I think that that's a good, um a good thing because there's so many yes, dis, sure. dishonest uh yeah polyglots polyglots so yeah. and it's it's because it's money once yeah. once once money gets involved it gets scary yeah so for sure. um so what else what uh you, you were talking about your list of languages what so like what do you think the next couple of years i mean i know that that's hard to if you ask me what i'm going to be studying next month i yes. wouldn't have an answer for you so so honestly at this rate if you told me next week i probably i'd still probably say hindi maybe no um next couple of years um so yeah i kind of i a lot of people are kind of for this a lot of people aren't um i have a list like i mentioned previously mm-hmm. um i don't even act i don't tell myself i don't try and pretend that i'm going to be c1 in all of these languages right um i'm content with being b1 in every language as long as i can have a genuine conversation mm-hmm. with natives that is all that matters to me yeah um i do for sure see in the next couple of years maybe even um 
you're for sure Hindi. Um, I want to get my German back up um, to where it was. Uh, I was really happy with my level at that point. I kind of stopped too early and it kind of just fell off the cliff. Right. Um, I want to get my Dutch up. Um, I know I studied German for longer, but I always tell my friends that I felt more fluent in Dutch, mm-hmm. uh, which is interesting. Um, with that, yeah. I also want my Icelandic to be at a reasonable level. Um, and, you know, this is probably like two or three years from now. I'm not talking, you know, two months from now. Right. Um, but I do really want to get kind of the, the languages that I started with. I want to bring those up to a pretty intermediate level, maybe a lower intermediate or something. Yeah. Uh, maybe touch on something different and new. Um, that's all I really have planned now. I know that's going to change 100%. Sure. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I can agree with you there. I, I mean, it, it changes all the time. I'm actually, uh, I've noticed, and I don't know where it's come from, and I'm completely okay with it. I've mm-hmm. noticed a surge of people wanting to at least dabble in Icelandic. Oh, yeah. It's a amazing language. Um, I don't know. There obviously interest um, changes person by person. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, I think the interesting thing is, is that it is a... Um, Germanic language, obviously, but it's a language that hasn't changed in, or it hasn't changed drastically, I should say, in, you know, hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's on an island, it's spoken by probably, what, 300,000 native people. Right. um, On a very well-off country, um, gorgeous landscapes. I haven't been personally, I've been to the airport, that's about as far as I've gotten. Dude, if you see pictures Um, of Iceland, it's... Yes. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, yes. Um, I've heard the people are outstanding. Um, the they're super friendly, um, and honestly, it's just one of those languages that I don't want to be fluent in, but I want to be able to just, if I ever, when I inevitably go to Iceland, I want to be able to use um, the language. And I think the difficulty of it is kind of intriguing as well. Um, yeah. For me, at least, I'm a big gra- uh, grammar like nerd. That's my favorite right. thing about a language. Um, but yeah, for sure. Yes, yeah, I was going to ask about the difficulty because it seems like I remember people saying that Icelandic, it, it's not like Finnish, but like that it's strangely difficult. Yeah, I think what the the stigma on that is that it is a so it's a germanic language it is a um it's it's a northern germanic i'm pretty sure um like scandinavian language um but it's extremely closely related to old norse in fact they're Mm. mutually intelligible you can't like if you were to read a book in old norse um but you only spoke icelandic you would understand like what was going on whoa um so it kind of ha- it has the 4K system, but it's interesting. So German has the 4K cases as well, and that's like the only Germanic language besides Icelandic that does have the, the, the 4 cases. Mm-hmm. Um, and nouns decline, like Russian. Um, mm-hmm. So there will be, I think there are three genders. There are four cases. I think there's like 12 different versions a word can be um, or something like that. It's pretty ridiculous. Um, and then on top of that, the word for, for the is a suffix on the word, uh, making it a little bit more different than right. your average, you know. So German it's it's kind of it is kind of like like Norwegian, like flick and flick yes. and fl- Okay, yep. mm-hmm. that makes exactly, yep. that makes sense. Let's see. Nick says I think many people got interested in Icelandic because many vloggers and travelers started to go yes. to Iceland. Yeah, I would say that because like yes. there wasn't really a lot of exposure on it, and then. Because it's one of those areas. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty new in terms of like um, global interest, I guess you could say. Japan was there for a really long time. That's why there's the whole Japan, uh, Japanese, you know, thing going around. And then it was Mm -hmm. K-pop. And then Korean was a big thing. And, you know, Iceland's getting up on the list. And other countries are too, which is really great for the the language learning community for sure. Yeah, I was – who was I talking to? I was talking to somebody – one time about um like japanese i feel like is like my generation's like go to like people because i'm i'm 32 yes. so like it's like my generation's thing and then i feel like the generation below me was like for whatever reason there was just a weird split and it was just korean like korean exploded with interest 
with my generation, um, I guess there's probably a, there's a generation in between yours and mine. That's the Korean. Mm -hmm. um, I don't entirely know what the because um, you know you still see the the Japanese and the the Korean still kind of worked its way down the line and it's still really popular in my generation um because yeah. k-pop is still thriving oh yeah um yeah k-drama and just korean culture in general um so i honestly don't think that that's really changed yet um and there aren't you know really any new and upcoming you know languages i guess yeah. um that are kind of really hitting the market right now so yeah um, I, th I think the main attraction to them for people like in terms like again Icelandic is coming up but like yes. in terms of Japanese and Korean um they are like it, it's it's gonna sound stupid but like I think you're gonna know what I'm saying they they're not just foreign they are so foreign it is like it, it's yeah. the complete opposite it's, of everything that we are it's um it's uh exotic I yeah guess, absolutely. How, how i put it yes yeah yes yeah so it's it's you know because that's the thing you know going to spanish or like you know uh german or any of these like even to an extent if you get a little further over like even like turkish and stuff like even though they're different, different but, language family but, yeah. but but it's they're still like the, using the same alphabet sometimes, or, or at least have similar oh. characters. Mm -hmm. And the man, you hit, you hit Korea, J Japan. Well, yeah. and and again, their their media helps a lot too. Because I mean, yeah. you got like, I mean, uh, you know, you got people from like Cambodia, but like, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't you know, but it's uh, and I guess Thai, Thai does a lot too. Like Thai is getting kind of but, up there too on the list. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, man. Like it's, and that's what interested me in in Japanese and Korean is the mm -hmm. you know in, in J Japanese specifically, you know the the movies. Um, I'm a huge movie buff, or well, I used to be, but like, yeah. I got so tired of American film because everything is a remake or everything is adapted from a, a Japanese film, and I was like, why don't I just watch Japanese film? Watch the actual. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of where that went, and then of course Korean. My favorite movie of all time is Korean. Yes. Old old boy, so What about do you um we'll talk about another couple of things. I don't know what your time frame is here, but oh, we can talk I'm about free whenever. Okay. Yeah. Uh we'll we'll talk about another topic or two and then I can, I can wrap it up um sure. if you need to or whatever, but in terms of like uh media, right? Like with the whole like um like the MIA thing, right? The the yes. mass immersion. Yeah. Um Jet, you know. Yeah. What do you think about, and not even just for Japanese, but for any language? Like, do you yeah. do you find the importance of immerse? Maybe not even a hundred percent of the time, but just do you find the importance in immersing in the language that you're trying to learn? Yeah. So um, I've always kind of been intrigued by that because um, you know the whole full immersion thing kind of started with you know Matt in Japan. Um, his level of Japanese is astonishing uh mm -hmm. steve kaufman himself said that you sound <laughs> like you know if i were to close my eyes i would think that you were you know some teen japanese walking the street in japan i'd have no idea yep. um and it kind of raises the question of how important um immersion really is to language learning um there have been videos floating around of this thing called comprehensible input mm -hmm. um kind of the the theory of learning like a baby is starting to kind of make a rise again yeah. in the in the community um and i think there is definitely a place for it for mm -hmm. sure um it really just depends on the person i know for me um and i think it really also depends on how you do it because matt has his own he said you know because yes he is doing full immersion but he's not just doing full immersion he's also learning the kanji through mm -hmm. um remember the kanji and he's still going through anki decks and things like that yeah. he's not just listening and letting it you know come to him naturally right um i think it takes fine tuning um to fit a person's needs because some yeah. people can learn like that other people can't right um i've tried and i can't um i need to know at least a little bit of what's going on so that i can kind of get the bigger picture sure 
uh, I can't go in blind and just kind of guess. Um, so I think it is definitely effective. The results are there, but it really just depends on, um, you know, the person doing it and how it's being handled yeah. that really measures the effectiveness of yeah. the, yeah. There's, there's two things that stand out to me about MIA, and that mm-hmm. is, one is, first and foremost, it is the most, you, you have to self-motivate. Like, if you don't have motivation, MIA is going to yeah. kill you immediately. Absolutely. Um. And the other thing that I found odd about that, I I had a I had a Skype call with Matt, I think last September, and I was talking to him, and I said, "Where did the update videos come from?" And he's like, "What are you talking about?" And I said, "No other program. You don't see Rosetta Stone updates. You don't see Duolingo updates. But yeah. If you, but if you go to YouTube right now and search yeah. MIA update, there's well, probably one, one that was posted today." today. And people, my one month, my six months, my year, my three month, my eighteen that's, month. That's I was like, "When did that?" And he was like, "I, I have no idea. I don't." And I was like, "It's amazing that you've started done this, that." This, yeah, absolutely. Um, interestingly enough, that kind of makes me question the because you mentioned motivation with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember when I was kind of I was watching the the very, you know, famous, uh, Steve Kaufman and Matt, um, interview, you know, Mm -hmm. the one where they kind of bumped heads a little bit. Yeah. Um, he, I I was kind of watching that. Um, and I thought it was really interesting. Uh, Steve, I don't think really liked the method and then Matt was like swearing by it. Um, and then I remember later on, Matt was talking about how he was. So originally he was like, I'm only doing this with Japanese. This is the only language I'm going to learn in my life um, besides English. And that's it. And then he made this video and he said, I'm going to adapt the AJAT method to the, uh, to Chinese. Chinese. I'm going to learn Mandarin. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen a video about that since. And I'm starting to wonder maybe, um, maybe the method was fine tuned for Japanese specifically. And that's why a lot of people don't really get success using the full immersion in mm-hmm. other languages because it just hasn't been done before yeah um, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll he'll occasionally make like uh he does um uh patreon q a's oh yeah and um he'll mention occasionally that he does that but i honestly think that i mean mia is his job like yes uh, and i know that him and yoga are constantly working on this developing this how can this tool work better and i honestly think that he's at a point i I don't know i I don't know matt personally or anything i've spoken to him a time or two but that's it but i think that he uh he i I am a randomly a friend with him on facebook he had he added me on facebook and i thought that was like the coolest experience of my life (laughs) at the time i was like i guess I, i have talked to him a couple of times but like i don't know him personally enough to be like yes he's totally doing this but like I honestly think that they're spending so much time on, because that's the thing you can't. Regardless of how people feel about Matt and what he's doing, I know people are like, "Oh, it's a cult or blah blah." But dude, the they're are there. The, yeah. well, the results are there, and they're constantly putting material out. They're always updating that website. They're always releasing Anki add-ons. Like they're not just sitting there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, and I'm wondering if there's so much of his time is spent in that that he just. Because the idea of MIA is you never do anything else, but he's—I I guarantee you—he's eight to ten hours a day and working on that. Time commitment. I that is, and you know, like like I mentioned before, is I just don't know how well that adapts to, you know, with a method that's been evolving constantly, mm-hmm. updating constantly. Um, the further it updates, you know, it kind of splits the divide between here's other languages and how you can use full immersion. And then here's, here's MIA right here with, with the method of Japanese and it kind of, you know, widens the gap and it starts to become more difficult with how do I really use this method? And, you know, for example, how do I do this with Hindi? I have no idea because his method talks about memorizing kanji. Well, Hindi doesn't have kanji. Right. Um, I have no idea how I would even begin to do that in Hindi. Um, and I think that's really the main, you know, kind of difficulty with doing, yeah. um, with, with immersion in my opinion. I know that, um, Luke Truman, the guy that, yes. the, the last guy that yeah. did the interview, uh, 
he, because actually, I, the, I think I told him in that interview, I wasn't 100% sure where I found his channel, but I know it could have been when he did the interview with Matt, because he did, instead of all Japanese all the time, he, you know, Matt would do the interview with AJatters. He was ACATters. Um, oh, yeah. So he, he would probably have, not necessarily that you're learning Chinese or something, but I know his yeah, channel, sure. his channel talks about it, and that could help you figure out how to adapt that i know luke does a lot of interesting content on he he does kind of do the whole immersion but he doesn't you know obviously he focuses on you know mandarin and cantonese mm -hmm. um have you seen his series on him doing the the full week in cantonese i thought that was phenomenal that was awesome i, I don't think i did see that I yeah he um i think it's something that was it, it should be shown more on youtube honestly he went to um, Hong Kong. Uh, I think he has a girlfriend that lives there. Um, but she was in the U.S. or something or wherever he's from. Um, and they were visiting family. And he went and took a trip to you know Hong Kong. And he only spoke. He said, as soon as the plane landed in um, China, I do not speak English anymore from this point on. It is only Cantonese until I go back uh, home. I thought that was really interesting. Um, that's how I found his channel, at least. But, okay. Yeah. That's interesting, yeah. That's what's weird. What's weird about YouTube is, um, you, <laughs> like, there's so many channels that I watch that I don't know where I found them. But then I feel yeah. like, you know, and again, there's some that I do. Like, I know that with Aaron, I found via Esperanto because I was searching Esperanto stuff. I know that Dakota from Language Learning yes, Lounge or yeah, Dakota I, Abroad, he, yeah. I found his stuff through an Esperanto video. But then, yeah, guys like. Like, I wonder where I stumbled across Matt outside of searching best ways to learn Japanese or something. But, like, I never I never would have searched Mass Immersion Approach because I didn't know what it was. Yeah, I think mine would have been the Steve Kaufman interview because I remember that was kind of a big, like, oh, Steve Kaufman kind of went head-to-head -head with Matt in Japan. And I was like, right. who is Matt in Japan? And I kind of checked it out. It was interesting. Yeah, that's, that's, what, I that's cool. I think a, a lot of ways I find the channels, um, I'm, I'm a big resource guy. I love mm. language resources. That's like, that's my passion over, you know, it's language learning, then it's like resources and, and you know, yeah. notes and everything that falls under the study method. Mm -hmm. um, I'll look up bookshelf, you know, language learning bookshelf tours. Yeah. I think those are phenomenal. Uh, I was about to film one for my channel, you know, earlier today. I'll probably do it later this week. Um, but I think doing things like that is awesome. Um, and that's how yeah. I find a majority of the language channels that I look at. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are always good. I get, sometimes I, uh, I had found a channel not too, too long ago called, uh, uh, Tokini Andy who does, he does Japanese stuff. And he had, he had like, he was at like 300 subscribers. And I was like, this is blasphemy. This dude is making amazing content. Yeah. yeah and uh, sure. he's, he's getting ready to pass 2,000. Like, it just oh, it just yeah. happened. And I was like, well, all right. Yeah, but, well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it, it's just it's funny, man, that how just certain things. Well, Moses, dude, I, I started watching Moses' channel in 2009. And yeah. uh, I'm, so you're talking 20 thousand ish subscribers hmm. uh i started doing stuff for him. i started working for him when he had 30 30 thousand uh, i would edit okay. i would edit his videos um at the time and stuff like that and then we would go a little bit without talking and then we'd talk again and then a little bit i was th that whole thing that you do with people anyway yep. and then i remember um he's <laughs> He sent me a message. He was like, "Oh man, uh, he he sent me a picture of a, a newspaper clipping, and he was like, I was featured on a on a, I think on a magazine or something in Poland.'" And I was really? like, "What?" And so he went from like thirty thousand to eighty thousand subscribers in like a day, yeah. and then like, and then just it just randomly happens. Like I know, like late last year, he was at like one hundred and thirty thousand. Now he's at nine hundred and fifty four. Like it just, yeah. and he's been doing it since oh seven. So you just you yeah. gotta you gotta keep. You gotta keep content for sure changed sure. a lot too because back in you know his early years he wasn't really making the level up videos a whole lot he was doing videos on how he here's studies how you and get from beginner to intermediate and yeah. Russian here's how you 
Here, here are all of my resources. His language dojo, I think, is what he calls it. Yeah. Um, Orders of the dojo. You know, here are my forty colloquial <laughs> courses and my six hundred teach yourself yep. courses and got all the mass you know, emails. Yeah. yeah. All of his lessons that he made, things like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can remember watching videos of him walking around his apartment, and he would have the paper, and he'd be like, "This is my schedule," and like he was talking, yeah. and I was like, "Yeah." Dude, that's and crazy. Note cards with all the dialogues from all of his books, like you know, his Asimil books. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's he's dropped some money on it. So here here's a here's a question um, for you, and that is, I I went once you sent me your information, you, you sent me a message on Twitter, yep. and you were like, hey, I do you know blah blah blah. So you you run a YouTube channel, yes. Lang, Lang Depot, right? Lang Depot, yeah. Um. Are you going to start – do you have plans of wanting to make uh, regular videos or, or anything like yes. that? Yes. Um, obviously, now that everyone has more free time on sure. their hands, um, I started the channel kind of as a – you know, I've always been into languages, but I never really wanted to make a uh, – I never wanted to be a channel where I kind of sit in front of a camera and give um, advice without being – qualified to i guess you right. could say um so i just never made a channel because i never really had the whole um i just never really had the qualifications for it um i do fully intend on becoming more um you know because we kind of take breaks from hobbies you know i'll flip oh, yeah. from i'll flip from computer programming to languages and i'll go back and forth and it just so happens i'm in my language thing right now i'm really feeling it um and yeah, I'll be posting regular videos. And the whole point of the channel was that I think a lot of beginner, um, I'm on I'm on r slash language learning on Reddit. I think mm -hmm. it's uh, it's a it's a it's an interesting place. Um, and you know, a lot of people are like, "What can I use to learn this language?" And I comment sometimes because, like I mentioned, I'm a big resource guy. I I love collecting language courses mm -hmm. and books and things like that. Um, and the point of the channel is, is that I risk my, my language education by only learning enough of what is in a specific book. Mm -hmm. And then I give you tips and pointers on how you can better improve your, um, you know, usage of these books. So mm -hmm. for example, my first one that I had was a Duolingo Hindi course. I had to give up halfway through because just the tree was so bad um i think i picked a bad language for that um but the point was is that i would go in with no experience at all mm -hmm. uh, go through the tree ideally this was the idea at the beginning um go through the tree and then basically give you a progress um you know like uh this is what i can say uh if anything at all and here's what you can do to boost your um you know, to boost your ability to use the language using only uh, this thing. Because a lot of people out there, you know, learn languages because they're going somewhere. Um, right. I want to go, you know, uh, I want to go to Iceland. I'm going to learn Icelandic, but I don't, you know, I don't know where to start. I don't learn languages. Um, the whole idea was is I have a book, and this is a popular book. You might be able to buy it for $30. Um, and if this is the only thing that you use – this is what it's going to bring you up to, and this is how you can, you know, effectively study with just this one thing. Um, obviously, I wouldn't advise studying with one resource if you're serious about a language. I'm sure you wouldn't either. Right. Um, it's just not a smart thing. Um, but yeah, that was kind of the whole methodology behind the whole channel. Um, I had to take a break because of school and everything, but now sure. that I'm home all the time um you know I'll, I'll have more time so yeah for sure yeah um you yeah. plan on posting more Do, and that's the thing man that and that's where uh, when i started the my language channel i thought because i wanted to do it for a long time because i do love languages but i was like who am i to give advice and that's why i've adapted my channel to more so of the the journey the journey yep. so um because i definitely am not you know well i don't know man i i feel like I feel like I can tell people what to do based on what I've done in terms yep. of telling them not to do something. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, um, yes. but yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. Cause like, I definitely think about that from time to time and I'm like, I do. I mean, I have a ton of people, you know, watching my channel. Not, I mean, not a, t a ton for me, 
Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. Yeah. And so, but I don't think that they're necessarily looking for advice as much as just, all right, let's see where he's at, what's going on. And honestly, I feel like, I feel like as long as you bring a genuine personality, um, yep. I think that that can do a lot. Because like I said, dude, like, and I know people criticize the dabbling and stuff, but dude, on my channel, one thing that is for certain, you are going to get me, regardless of, yep. regardless of if I start learning Vietnamese le next week or whatever. Like, it's 100% just me, so... Um, and I think if you bring a genuine nature to it, I think it'd be cool. And if you go through a journey, man, I mean, I, I think it would be, cool. I love watching that stuff myself. And that's, you know, part of the reason of doing this podcast. And I had mentioned in the post that I made, I was like, I don't care if you, I don't care if you don't have a YouTube channel. If you love languages, like I just like to hear people's stories, how they talk their journeys. Cause I mean, you can learn something from everybody. Yeah, for sure. So well, dude, uh, you have any, um, closing segments for the um, videos and stuff I mean, the only thing i guess if you if you do you know need help finding resources or if you're looking for any reviews on resources or s suggestions or anything um my channel is lang depot uh it's l-a-n-g-d-e-p-o-t um that's really all i have for you thanks for having me cool yeah dude i appreciate i appreciate yeah. you coming on uh, i i never know what to expect in some of the interviews where i don't you know Mm -hmm. know somebody but uh, languages can bring people together and that that's yes. that's truly honestly the beauty of it because even if you get into video games and stuff you might have people come you know fighting each other over it but that, that's the beauty of languages man we can all yeah. come together so Whole point of it. yeah for sure all right well i'm going to in this stream that was a super super good call and I, i'm not hesitant on having people on again uh, any, anybody who's been on, uh, we can, we can chat as well. Um, sure. I just like talking to people. So, and I know, yeah, I know people sure. watch, I feel like a lot of, a lot more people watch these after they're released, you know, like yeah. just throughout the day or something. Mm -hmm. And that's perfectly fine. I, I would like to get it built up to where there is a, a, a solid, you know, chat going on cause you yeah. can interact and stuff like that. But Anyway, we can discuss all this after the stream ends, I guess. Um, cool. Well, everybody, thank you for joining. And uh, I will be I will be back uh, tomorrow night. I think at eight o'clock. So if anybody is watching this before tomorrow night at eight o'clock, I'll be back then. So thank you all for listening. All right, let me end the stream.